thanks to Sivia Malloy, who was in the control room, I'm able to stand and talk to you for God Talk, usually by Michael Mack, the, as you all know, the great Michael Mack. And he's traveling to visit family, and I'm covering for him. And the first part of this hour, we discuss the birth of Jeshua, or Joshua, Jesh, Jesus, Jeshua, his name in, in Hebrew was Jeshua. And we discussed how Yosef's dream that his pregnant wife was not disgraceful, not a shame, but really impregnated by a messenger from God, enabled her and him to really get married with this beautiful love-inspired interpretation of what appeared to be infidelity, or worse, maybe even a rape. So now, young Jeshua is born, celebrated by people. I mean, to even have in his body, mind, and spirit. Wow, your parents so loved each other that they were able to overcome that great difficulty and marriage and see it all as a gift from God. Well, of course, word got out and Herod, hearing of this miraculous birth, even from our under human understanding of Joseph and Mary, Joseph forgiving, wanted to kill all the children in the neighborhood. So here's another worse horror. Joshua, Jesus, knowing first he knew if you can know in the womb, I think you can. I had a friend of mine whisper to the baby in her womb, your big sister is going to love you and you're going to love her. And when the daughter was born, sister and daughter loved each other very much. And so Joshua Jesus, overcoming that disgrace, shame in the womb, now knew when he learned to know that in his body, his very existence brought death to the children in the neighborhood, real bloody death. How can that be overcome? Maybe more than, not maybe, more than a dream is needed. How to overcome the fact that your existence, really through no fault of your own, but still your existence, brings murderous death to all the children in the neighborhood. I think I need to sit down, see if I can do this. How to do, how to even center. And maybe the feeling, experience, knowing, dream, oh my, I need to die. 
to help people live. And that will make up beautifully again. People living or dead, even in hell, visiting hell. I need to find a way to die so people can live. Since being born meant people die. Now how on earth or in heaven can a young child, called bastard probably by children in the neighborhood, knowing what it's like to be an outcast, who really were illegitimate, <laughs> an alien. How to take this experience like the way Yosef blessed Miriam and said what you did was a miracle. How did they take the experience of being called bastard of having children in the neighborhood die because you exist. In what way could he die so people can live? You think you had problems growing up. Help us, O oh Lord. And of course we know Easter is coming, Christmas is nigh, that equally imaginatively, like Yosef, Yeshua Jesus was able to say, share, move people. to say, if you feel death in your life, or you're afraid of death, death and depression are close. If you feel like you're dying and know and scared you're going to die, those are two separate things. I, my life, will help you live. And how? Here's one guess. Maybe, like his father, Joshua Jesus would be able to forgive everybody for missing the mark and not being with the life force, the divine, the beautiful divine energy, the beloved divine energy. If you miss the mark, you're not, you're misshapen, you're not with life. His, your love, Joshua, Joshua, your forgiveness will help us, write us like a chiropractor help write us. Now, how is this done? And of course, we can read all the Gospels, meditate on them. How can we help, like Joseph did Miriam, and maybe we can. Are there ways of looking at our own mistakes? My beloved therapist said they were all needed. The walls that kept me from you and other people. I needed them to protect me now, hopefully at this advanced age of 77. They surely are beginning to come down. One of my friends as she was dying said, Michael, a former lover, you've turned yourself 180 degrees around. Another friend said 360. So there's hope for all of us. There's hope for me. So what exactly is involved 
in helping people be free of their sin. And I remember in, in Hebrew, sin is not what Christians eventually made of it. Sin was missing the mark. I didn't aim, I didn't say those things well. I didn't do those things well. I've stopped the flow, the, the flow of beloved divine energy between us. What, and maybe, one writer, Dostoevsky, has Alyosha, his 21-year-old monk leaving the monastery, say, we're more responsible for other people's sin than they are. Alyosha being well trained by a great teacher, Father Zasima. So if there's trouble between him and his woman friend, even him and his very difficult father, that trouble, that missing that connection, that beloved divine energy, maybe like Alyosha, Jeshua could say, I'm more responsible than you for missing us missing that beloved divine energy flow. Whatever difficulties are happening, let me take at least 50% responsibility. Let's look a little bit, we only have 14 minutes to go, at, since Christmas is here, let's take a peek at Easter coming up. So whatever difficulties life brings, whatever crucifixions, again, the beautiful way of looking at it is like spring, which is getting closer now. We've turned the corner. Days are getting longer and lighter. So as, as we all know, the story is the truth is in one of the, the stories aim to get at the truth. That Jeshua Jesus comes into Jerusalem and celebrated, Hosanna! Hey. And that's as the king of the Jews. And that's a cause alone for him to die in that situation. And maybe saying, I will stand for pretty non-violent revolution. I got maybe a little carried away and made a whip of cords into the temple just to draw attention to himself. But basically a non-violent revolution against the powers that be against the Romans and willing to do that and die so his people can be free and eventually Christianity takes over the Roman Empire. Now there's one, again, another perspective to look at the death of Jeshua surrounded by loving friends. So he undergoes the pain, the flogging, the crucifixion, and he's on the cross, and the soldiers let his friends take him down. After just a few hours, and a rich friend has him not thrown to the dogs, like often when people are crucified, but has him wrapped up in a beautiful shroud and put in the tomb, a lovely tomb. 
Mm. And when Pilate heard about this, he said he's taken from the cross so soon. Because usually people on the cross die of not having air to breathe, suffocating. They can't get their lungs to breathe. And it takes often two to three days. A gesture where Jesus was taken down quickly, wrapped in that shroud and bomb. And that tomb could be like a womb or a cradle for him to be born again. Um, they used to have bells in coffins, so people who were thought were dead didn't come revive, didn't ring. And this happened in Brookline many years ago, when I was when I was here thirty or so years ago. You could ring the coffin, ring the bell in the coffin. So it could be, even if. Joshua Jesus was flatlined. It could be, Jesus, that you weren't totally dead, dead to all the world. But again, like Yosef and Miriam, your friends, courage, imagination, love and care can help you revive. Now, one nice way of looking at the word revive, it's available for all of us. I mean, resurrection is too available for all of us. Revive seems a little bit more down to earth. So we can all revive actual or day-to-day -day experiences that feel like death, depression, all of our energy goes. And with Jeshua Jesus as an example, but maybe more than that, a friend that is with us at those times is not condemning us, seeing that the mistakes we made, the missing the mark, are gifts in themselves. I needed to be insensitive. I couldn't really get your brother because I needed to protect myself. I could cry saying that. I have one brother who doesn't talk to me. I was talk to anyone. I was his father and mother. It's just too painful for me to be with him. I had to be in my head and teach him or control him. I don't blame him. And I needed that too. That probably is still hurting him way more than me. So please forgive me, brother. I certainly forgive you for your response to me. So, Jeshua, Jesus himself, almost, almost dead, maybe even flatlined, and then revived. Love of friends and friends being moved by energies spirit way more than we understand to cradle and comfort Joshua. And then he can come out of the tomb. When the women in the Gospel of Mark, the first Gospel, come, they just see a man saying that Joshua will be going to Galilee, I believe, and uh, his followers will meet them there. Very matter of fact, in that before he died, he was very like me with my brother. You asked, 
that's sure for a cup of coffee. He'd say, verily, verily, I say unto thee, and he would let us know, right? Unless a man die at night and be revived in the morning, then he can drink his coffee. Hope that made sense. So, maybe we're beginning to understand if we see that the sins of others and our own, missing the mark, missing that beloved divine energy flowing through all of us, more mysterious than we know. And when it stops, Jesus will say, I'll take responsibility with you and even more than you for it stopping and maybe inspired in, um, inspiring us to do the same. And then that flow may come back again. And even after we die, I mean, if Jeshua was actually dead or not, it really doesn't matter. It's something to move us all, that that could be coming attractions for death. And even when we do really die, why not? Our spirit, especially loved by friends and family, can be revived and appear to people who love us and want to know us even better. So, the two stories of conception, or maybe three, birth and death, are gifts to all of us. And may we take it to heart, may we take you to heart, Joshua Jesus, and be born, die and be reborn more and more of the time. tempted to sing, what a friend we have in Jesus, I won't. Maybe a little, what a friend we have in Jesus. And to see that Christ, which means Messiah, or Messiah means, Messiah in Hebrew is Christ in, in Greek. And it means anointed in both languages. When the king is made a king, oil anoints. So when I was baptized Catholic, put oil on my face, which shined. And I could feel as I walked down the midway, my face shining in the sun. And the cross that the priest made in my spine, so that when I feel that I am mostly air. I know there's a backbone in there that will help me revive from all suffering. Well, thank you for joining us for a God Talk. My name is Michael Coran. I'm filling in for Michael Mack, who will be with us uh, be with you next week. And we still have a minute and a half. I have this beautiful story when Jeshua was baptized by his cousin John the Baptist. And they seem to have known each other even when they were in the womb, both being born from extraordinarily challenging circumstances. John's father was silent <laughs> when the messenger told him, you're going to have a son with your old wife, Elizabeth. So John could shut his father up just by existing. And so John and 
Jeshuan understood each other well. And it says that Jesus came from Nazareth and was baptized in the Jordan by John. At the moment when he came up out of the water, he, Jesus, saw the heavens torn open and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And he felt this, perhaps with John, with someone who understood him, going into possible death underwater, and then being reborn, and could feel their understanding, their love in this rebirth. Their love feels like a dove. I wish that between all of us,